Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. Adam LaFaccia, your moderator, rejoining you. And thanks for joining us for our next session. I'm going to turn the floor right over to Camila Bryce Laporte to take things over from here. Hi, Adam, and thank you very much. And thank you, Sally and Diana, for this opportunity. We're going to talk about the Young Folklorist Training Program, uh, and it's called the Mustard Seed Ministry. The Mustard Seed Ministry, the name was coined by our youth pastor, Jonathan Jones, and it's based on a verse from Matthew. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is larger than all the garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. The Mustard Seed Saturday Enrichment Program I'll go to the next slide, is a program that was developed um, at Tacoma Park Baptist Church. It's a faith-based initiative. We use arts and humanities as a basis for our curriculum. We meet on Saturdays. It's a collaboration between Tacoma Park Baptist Church, two ethnic uh, cultural productions, Pan Laura Steel Ensemble, the White House Studios, and uh, a group that's not cited here, the Earthen Vessels Foundation. Uh, we, um, we meet on Saturdays, as I said, and we offer, um, we offer classes that you see above there. The Mustard Seed provides training and cultural documentation um, and traditional Pan-African forms of music. Um, and art forms such as crafts, oratory, choral music, steel pans, strings, and liturgical dance. Um, our kids I think, come from a diverse cultural background. Um, they are um, African American, African, um, Caribbean, and of Caribbean descent. And they're all there. They're like five countries represented there, even though they all look alike. And our objective is to use the um, arts, humanities, and Christian principles to develop strong, thoughtful, skilled, and effective leaders for our global community. Um, the Saturday Enrichment Program was something that's existed at Tacoma Park for several years. It's had several different formations. And um, we started it again because um, two things happened. Deborah Lara of the Pan Lara Steel Band came to us and said, that uh, she wanted to do a, a program with children. And um, we also, um, uh, we had a meeting with the county executive of Montgomery County, which is just outside of Washington, D.C., and he expressed that we were having problems with truancy in our area, which is kind of, uh, we understood why. Um, we understood the impact that the media was having on our kids. This area, Montgomery County, is one of the most affluent counties in the country. And um, most of the people of African descent are fairly well educated. Everyone from the taxi driver to the, to the county executive is an upwardly mobile person, is a person who's come to Montgomery County to move their family forward. And um, what we understood that that what was happening was that uh, as first and second generation migrants and immigrants, we understood that the impact of the larger society where people want and uh, they, you know, the principles that we grew up with, uh, the value of hard work was being diluted by other factors. And so we thought the best way to engage our kids academically and socially was to use the arts to re-engage them in their culture and remind them of where they came and what our values and traditions were. Um, the, our parents are central to this project uh, and our families are central to this project. So every family comes from a cultural background and every family informs the project. So. Here, what you see in this picture, we have two of our parents. On the left, in the center, Althea Gray McKenzie. She's a Jamaican-born uh, uh, resident, and she's also a dancer. She's actually a scientist and a dancer, and she, she directs our dance program. Uh, she teaches both 
she teaches liturgical, contemporary, and Caribbean and Afro-Caribbean and African dance. And to the right center is Deborah Lara. She's Trinidadian born, and she is the director of our Steel Pan program. She directs a program at the church called Gospel on Steel, where the children learn um, both Caribbean and American uh, spirituals on the steel pan. This is a picture of our fearless leader, uh, Jonathan Jones. He is the youth pastor at Tacoma Park Baptist Church. He is responsible for both children and youth um, at the church. He is uh, the director of Imani Strings and the former conductor of the DC Youth Orchestra in addition to, and he's also the, um, he's also the director of the Strings program at the George Washington uh, Middle School in Alexandria. The, the kids, um, this summer or this spring, we were, we had the good fortune of being selected as the youth access partner uh, for Will to Adorn. We covered the Washington Baltimore corridor. We We began, um, Sally and Diana were kind enough to loan us a little Kodak, and the kids began documenting um, artisans and purveyors of style throughout the Baltimore Washington corridor. They would accompany me and the other field worker, uh, who was Althea Gray McKenzie. And this picture, one of the one of the first events they documented was the um, uh, organization of American states. Uh, their cultural festival. And this picture represents the Panamanian group, Grupo Folklorico. And in one instant, the, the concept of documenting style, artisans of style, um, evidence of culture, all of that came forward with this one picture. Uh, they captured not only Afro-Latino, but all of the elements in Panamanian culture, the Caribbean elements, the African elements, and the Hispanic and the Indian in one shot. This is when the bell went off in their heads. After that, they accompanied us to different venues where we uh, found several artisans who were later featured in the Folklife Festival. The top left is Peter Bug Matthews. He is a cobbler, a master leather worker. Beneath him is Joanne Seely. She is a Guyanese uh, dressmaker, a designer of wedding gowns, and who works exclusively now in the Ethiopian community. Top right is her partner, Dune Zunea, who's an Ethiopian fabric designer. And uh, next to her is Norma Seely Boval, who is a Guyanese um, dressmaker and uh, jewelry designer. Beneath her, beneath those women, is uh, Fanny Hamilton. Fanny Hamilton is a master gardener. She's also a designer and of, um, of personal toiletries and cosmetics. And they had a wonderful time at her house and in her garden. Um, after the field work, the young mustard seed kids uh, were involved with the Folk Life Festival. Uh, we had the great opportunity of working with Jade Banks, who is on our top right-hand corner of the uh, Mind Builders, and her interns. And I see you, you can see Edmund there, and Madaha, and uh, Denny Moe, and some of the other kids, Asante. Um, and these young people inspired the younger group um, of mustard seed children. The mustard seed kids are probably five to 10 years younger than they are. And they inspired them to start identifying their own personal style. And you can see on the top left-hand corner, that's Kenya on Kenya Lara, who's probably our oldest uh, participant. She was 17 at the time. And with Madaha, uh, with uh, the help of Jade Banks and the others from uh, Mustard Seed, uh, from Mind Builders, 
they conducted their own workshops and their own discussion groups um, on, on developing sartorial autobiographies and on cultural documentation. Down in the lower right-hand corner, they're sitting with, you see that they're having a group discussion and um, the, the uh, Liberian performer, uh, Vera Oye, came and joined the conversation. This was a life-changing experience for the kids. The participation at the Folk Life Festival not only opened up their vision of what's possible, what the definition of African American meant, but it also, um, the, there was a writing program and, and um, um, they were able to express the changes that were occurring in them. Uh, one of the most profound was this young lady. Her name is Ariana Gray McKenzie. She uh, fell in love with the stylings of Genoa Moja. Genoa Moja had a regalia workshop at the festival. And Ariana, um, Genoa Moja draped Ariana in just fabric and um, articles of um, embroidery and transformed how this young lady felt about herself and she uh, the kids were were maintaining uh, journals during this period as as Jade and the mind builders required and this is an excerpt from her journal Ariana writes today I was a model for fashionista Genoa Moja Nelson she wrapped me in African fabrics and used jewelry of all sorts to make a girl look like Queens my personal experience is good to connect to your, that it is good to connect to your heritage and your culture. That launched this young lady and so many others on a new path of self-discovery. The other part of this uh, that was so generous is that um, the mind builders and the uh, Smithsonian staff, oh, guess what? We have a fire drill at the Smithsonian. Just like they would at school. Well, I'm afraid that we may have to hold for just a moment or two. Uh, for those of you who are not having fire drills, uh, which I assume is the majority of you, um, what I'll do is I'll drop the chat on the screen so you can continue to discuss some of the ideas that you've been talking about thus far. So I'm going to bring a little box up to the center of the screen. And as soon as we're resolved here, we'll be right back with you. Thank and you. We'll be right back as soon as we can, folks. Please hang tight. Thank you. Okay, everybody, we're going to pick up where we left off. One of the most important experiences that the Mustard Seed Ministry students had at the um, Folk Life Festival is that they began to use, um, that they, they'd receive a gift from the Smithsonian, uh, the loan of an iPad, iPod, and a 35 millimeter camera and microphones. And the youth from... Um, uh, mind builders and McLaren School were instrumental in teaching them how to use these uh, different formats to do cultural documentation. Here below you see the other thing that they explain to them is when these, um, when the, when the uh, iPod and the iPhone were in use, they could also document using their smartphones. This is Kayla documenting Anthony Gaskins. At the end of the Folk Life Festival, we conducted our own workshop. They continued their training at the Mustard Seed uh, Camp where we did cultural documentation and performing arts. Here you see the, the kids were taught the art of writing and ethnography. So it is learning to interview, learning to, learning to ask the right questions, note taking, um, editing, writing, editing, editing again, okay, until you got to your final document. In these two photos, you see a master quilter and seamstress, Carmel Washington. She belongs to the Daughter of Darkest. She did all the quilts around the church. And Anthony Gaskins, 
who is the hat man in Washington, D.C. He's a very prominent hat maker who came and gave them a workshop on hat making and entrepreneurship. Um, the following, we went to visit um, uh, one of their festival favorites, Vanilla Bean. She's the church. It's She has a hat shop in a historic area of Washington, D.C., Third Street Corridor, where there are still several Black businesses lined up together. And her shop, not only does she have hats, but she has, they learned how to explore these places to find, um, it's like a treasure hunt, finding articles of history and uh, things that could put their history in, within a social context. In addition to visiting um, these kinds of historical sites, we also took them to conventional historical sites like uh, the Martin Luther King Memorial, and then later on, they participated in the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington, the whole time documenting not only the sites, but the fashion and the culture surrounding the site. One of the things that we try to impress our children is that it's an each one, teach one philosophy. So it's an important uh, component of our program is uh, community um, service and civic responsibility. So the lessons that they learned in PAN, in cultural documentation, they shared with other groups. In this photograph, you see um, um, two of our youth, Joshua and Maya, teaching children from a Camp Dogwood. It's a camp in, in Virginia for underserved youths. They're teaching them the steel pan. Their Camp Dogwood is also doing lessons in language arts and and uh, writing as well. The most important part of this project for us were the gifts of affirmation. That what the children needed to see most of all is that they have the support of their community. One of the things, when the Smithsonian uh, loaned them the cameras, the, the Nikon, the iPad, the, the, um, the Kodak, it affirmed to them their worth, um, reaffirmed what they already knew. It made it okay to be intelligent, okay to have intergenerational conversations, okay to document my community. I don't have to wait for you to tell me what my neighborhood is about. I can tell you what my neighborhood is about. And you see that these kids are using them in conventional ways and in unconventional ways. Here in the center picture or the back picture, Joshua was using the iPad as a, a digital steel pan. Um, I, it, and the techniques that they're using, how they're angling the use of the camera and the microphone, those are things that they learned from the McLaren students. They also, the other part, uh, we had the strong backing from our church community. Here's Wanda Solomon with one of our participants, Carlita, uh, Carlita Garrett, who's a dancer and musician. We had solid support from her mother and grandmother, as did several of the other participants. And we also, the children also uh, received affirmation from their local community government. The Prince George's County County Executive presented them a certificate for community service. They the oral histories taught them that they could have intergenerational relationships once again, and that these older people had some, you know, valued them and had some vision for their future and wanted them to shoot higher, to aspire to do great things. And finally, um, with this project, they developed that. They developed skills that not only empowered them academically, but helped them to build good relationships within um, that tight-knit group. They became a very tight-knit group. And that helps to build a foundation for successful learning. Okay, so recapping, we use the most dynamic forms of our, of our culture, of our, of our artistic and cultural expressions to build character and self-confidence confidence to promote lifetime learning, cultural awareness, to clarify our values and our traditions as a culture, to emphasize civic and personal responsibility, to promote entrepreneurship, and finally, to strengthen the community. Sorry we had to rush through this, but I think the points are made. Um, and in the subsequent year, we'll, we will be doing a project with 
with we're continuing our work with Sally and Diana, and we are going to be doing interfaith uh, um, interviews with um, other faith communities, other Christian, Muslim, and Jewish communities, and um, documenting style, culture, and and values there too. Thank you. Wonderful, and mm -hmm. thank you so much for bringing us through oh. those, to, despite our little pause <laughs> there in the middle. Okay. Um, before we wrap up, I do want to just field at least one of the questions okay. that's come in for you. Uh, Julianne in New Hampshire asks, was Mustard Seed able to do any evaluation, or are you currently doing any evaluation or, or gathering any documentation of how powerful the experience of participating in the arts has been for these youth? We haven't done a formal evaluation. What we have done is collected the essays of the youth, and they've written extensively about what the experience has meant to them. Um, we also have um, two former school teachers or practicing school teachers, um, Lydia Jenkins and Barbara McSweeney, working with us, and they're reviewing the material that Sally and Diana provided us, and so they're making modifications. Once we've really gone through the materials and they've really dealt with the curriculum, then we will do an assessment, a final assessment. And I think, Camilla, if I can jump in here too, I believe that, you know, one of the first things that you did with your students was writing from the very beginning. Correct. So um, even though it wasn't a formal, hey, we're going to evaluate things right. now, you were able to, you'll, you know, at the end of the project, you'll be able to take their very initial writings, see how those have changed over time, see Correct. how their observations have changed, Correct. how their, their thoughts and feelings have changed and evolved over, over the course of the project. Correct. And what we... The hardest thing to do is to get them to write in the first place. So what we want them to do is feel comfortable with the writing process. So we're not, we tell them we're not looking for perfection. Mm -hmm. We're looking for excellence, and that means effort. That you know, right. not. Uh, so right now we just want them comfortable. Next year we'll move on. But I, I have to tell you that a lot of them, that that English grade has gone up tremendously. So. <laughs> You appreciate it. Always a nice side, yeah, yeah. side, <laughs> side bonus of the project. Great. Well, thank you so thank much, you. Camilla. And thanks for your question, Julianne. Okay. Great. So we're going to go off the air for just a moment or two as we transition to our next session. Obviously, our timing is a little bit different than what we originally had on the schedule. So we'll be just jumping back on with you in probably two or three minutes at the most. And uh, thank you again for sticking with us today. And uh, we'll be back with you soon.